Well, good morning. This is Lana D. Welcome to another short devotional. I am recording this on Saturday morning, two days after Thanksgiving. Did you have a good time? Did you enjoy your g gatherings? Did you eat too much? Well, one thing's for sure, many of you were not working, and that made Thanksgiving possible for you. But there's always someone working, isn't there? And I know that the Lord's always working. He never takes a day off, and I'm glad for that because that means he's always willing to listen to me when I pray, but he's also willing to talk to me. And so I wanted to share with you something, something very special and just very new to me. And it's a dream that I had. I want to entitle this short devotional, Rebellion is not only for children. That's right. What could I possibly have to say about rebellion? Well, let's take a look at my dream. I dreamed that I was about to sweep the floor. Well, everyone knows when you're getting ready for Thanksgiving, you're going to get your house as clean as possible. And there were a lot of dust bunnies. At first, I was in a room of my home, and the floor was dirty, it was filthy, as if I hadn't swept it for some time, and that really surprised me. As I said, I thought I had just swept it. The dream changed, and I found myself in a nursing home. Again, I was sweeping the floor, and apparently I also was preparing food. A janitor who was in charge came up to me and said, drop everything and he was speaking to several people, not just to me, and go out on the floor. He had realized that they were shorthanded and it was time to take all the residents to the bathroom. I explained, I was there sweeping and cooking. I wanted to talk to someone higher up in authority. I knew this wasn't for me. I next spoke to the administrator, and he repeated to me that the residents needed to go to the bathroom, that I had to drop what I was doing and go help. Well, I went and put the food away in the refrigerator as a procrastination. I kept complaining to him, well, I'm short, okay? It's hard for me to do that. I'm, I'm out of practice and I don't think I should have to do that as I was sweeping and cooking. That was my job. I didn't want to help men go to the bathroom. Well, the administrator told me to go and do what I was told by the janitor or I would be fired. That horrified me. I needed the job. I once again explained or complained that I didn't know what to do. Who, who did I help? And the administrator said, go ask the janitor. He's in charge. As I was waking up, I realized that I had dreamed this. I thought, wait a minute, I am 70 years old. I was relieved to know that because I'm old enough to be living in a nursing home, not working in one. What a horrible dream. And I never wanted to dream it again. You see, I had worked in a nursing home for years. First as an aide, then I was promoted to activities director and as an admissions coordinator later on. So I had basically done all of the different jobs that I could think of other than working in the kitchen or at the front end of the nursing home. So I put in my time. I paid my dues. And this does happen, by the way. If the facility is shorthanded, short of staff, it doesn't matter what your position. You are an aide. Well, at least in the nursing home I worked in. I questioned the Lord about this dream because it really irritated me. It was just, it was one of those dreams that upset me for some reason. And I was just glad it was a dream and not real. And then he began to speak. Lana, you have asked to speak to me and to know me better. The closer you desire to be to me, the more you must look at your own life and remove those things that displease me. You are harboring rebellion in your heart. Rebellion? What? I knew immediately, though, this was true. 
At first, though, I didn't say that to the Lord. I, I became rebellious, and I said, Lord, why me? Why is it every time I come to you because I have a problem, you correct me? Why don't you correct whoever it is or whatever it is that's hurting me or causing me a problem? The Lord said, you desire to be close to me. You desire to minister for me. You can do neither unless you first do some housekeeping. I remember that towards the end of my working career, something had changed. I got tired of always being passed over, not being recognized for what I could do as an employee. I began to push back. I began to stand up for myself. I even defied the group leader of one company as I knew more than she did about what I was doing. She had never done my job, but was trying to instruct me on how to do it. I knew it was wrong, as we are to obey those in authority over us. But I no longer cared, and I became argumentative in a sweet way and complained to the department manager over her, and lo and behold, I was laid off. I believe my attitude, my new change of direction, my rebellion may have cost me that job because I was laid off. Could this still be affecting me today? But this was not all God wanted to show me. The Lord began to show me that I carried this rebellious spirit home with me after my job. I had lived my life, my whole life, doing what other people wanted. Well, I had been the caretaker of my parents from an early age and took care of my younger siblings. In fact, I did this for 60 years of my life. I did this till the point that I was sick of it. I no longer listened when problems arose, but began to state what I believed in any situation, uh, if I was asked for my opinion or not, and I would no longer listen to what others had to say. I was right. They were wrong. End of story. The Lord repeated, if you want to serve me, you must obey me. Not just do the things you want to do, but also those things you do not. You must allow me to clean out those things in your life that are causing you to act sinfully. You do not have a chance to rebel as a child, and I've seen this in many adults. If you do not have a chance to rebel as a child, you will rebel as an adult. So rebellion can uh, hit you no matter what your age. So I began to pray and repent to the Lord for the rebellion in my heart. You see, I want to serve and to be used of the Lord. So it is time to do some housekeeping. I don't know if this story uh, resounds in your heart and mind, but you know, the Lord speaks to us many times and he uses different things in our life and in our dreams to reflect what we're doing. I don't know if you realize, but when you dream, many of your dreams are reflecting something that you are going through. And if you'll listen to those dreams, if you'll think about them, write them down, God will begin to speak to you and show you what he's trying to tell you in that dream, especially if it's a dream that affects you when you wake up and you just are startled by it or don't understand it. And I believe the Lord was showing me in my dream that my life was like that house. I thought it was clean, and I was surprised when I was finding so much dirt in it. I think the food was actually the ministry, the ministry I have and the ministry I desire. I want to be used of the Lord, but again, I have sin that stands in the way. The janitor. It seemed to affect me that he wasn't the actual manager in my dream. And that's why I think I was so shocked and I wanted to pick and choose who could teach or lead me. And I didn't want to take orders 
from the lowly janitor. In my real life, sometimes people want to share with me and correct me, and I think they haven't earned that position or authority. During the part of my dream where I was procrastinating and wanting to put the food away first and do my other jobs first, I think that represented the fact that I didn't want to do immediately what I was told. I could get out of doing perhaps what they wanted me to do if instead I did what I wanted to. So you see, there were lots of things that I could relate to in that dream. But the fact is, I did have a rebellious spirit. And as I look back now, even though I haven't worked for years, I can see that spirit in me when someone tries to share with me something I don't want to hear. I find myself be feeling rebellious, dismissive, and not wanting to receive what I'm being told. So if you're dealing with anything like that at all in your life, God wants to help you too. He may not give you a dream, but he might talk to you about the dream I had. And I just encourage you to go to the Lord. In this season, where we are talking about the things that we are thankful for, let's not forget that we might have even a closer relationship with the Lord. In our ministry, perhaps we want God to allow us to do more, but he can't use us until we get things straight in the areas of our life that he wants straight. In the relationships with our family, perhaps we could have a closer relationship if we listened more, talked less. So that's what I've learned this Thanksgiving, not what I wanted to learn. But in, in hindsight, again, yes, it's what I needed to hear and am praying that I will learn. So that was my Thanksgiving. And I hope that yours went well. And if you have something in your life that God wants you to deal with, sometimes he does wait until we have these moments when we are stressed, trying to get everything ready, that some of the uglies in our life comes out. So don't hesitate to go to the Lord with everything in your life, but then listen to him when he speaks to you. Perhaps you too have housekeeping to do in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all you have done for us here in America. Father, for what you have done throughout the world. Lord, be close to those who love you. Bring those close to you who do not know you, for we know your time is soon for your return. Father, this is the time to repent of our sins so that we that are Christians can bring in the harvest as you direct us. Our lives are lights in this world, Lord, and I know that we can either draw people to you or away from you in the way that we act. Lord, I pray for my sisters and brethren, Lord, that you would bless them this holiday season. For those, Father, who have had losses so close to this season, Lord, this makes it even more difficult to bear. I know of several who have lost loved ones, Father, and I ask that you be close to them. Heal their hearts, bring them close to you so that they too can feel your precious love and comfort. Lord, I ask that you will bless them. Christmas is coming, Lord, and that means even more stress. But Father, if we can live for you, we can bear what we have to go through. Amen and amen. Until next time, I remain your friend, Lana D. Thank you.